I was raking through in a box of stuff, including old projects, and one of them was this rather nice little fibre optic tree. And this uh, was a sort of cheap uh, ornament that had this sort of conical base that took batteries, and then it had this pluggable... You could either put it in a sort of spray of fibre optics, or you had this um, sort of twiggy branch type thing that looks like a small tree. And I modified it. I built the circuit board for the base that ran directly from the mains because I did like it. I liked having it on the house because it was quite an attractive little ornament. And running it from the mains just seemed to make sense. And at the time, I just thought, what's the smallest I can make the circuitry? How can I, you know, make it so simple uh, that it just slots into the existing base and uh, drives the LEDs for the for the tree? So this thing actually has seven LEDs, and this is where you get swamped out. Yeah, that's quite bright. Uh, it's got seven LEDs. Four red and three yellow, but I also did a blue and green one, I'm pretty sure, somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure where that is. It'll be somewhere around here. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look inside this and we'll uh, see the circuitry that I made. So here's what it looks like in normal light. And I quite, quite like this little tree. It really is just one of these sort of, like, fibre optic sort of tape-wrapped tree things, but scaled down to a really small size. And the base... Um, now, the iPad is making this flicker. The iPad makes everything flicker. If you consider that this is almost certainly a capacitive dropper and the LEDs, there's seven gallium arsenide LEDs, which are about two volt forward voltage, which is about 14 volts, then the amount of time they're actually off at the zero crossing point is virtually negligible, and yet somehow the iPad still makes them flicker. That's that's very odd. Uh, certainly I can't really get uh, a flicker when I shake it even. You know, it's just, it's odd. Anyway, let's unplug this uh, and open it up and take a look. Now, the circuit board, I, I think if I recall correctly, I've not had this open in a long time, it has the round circuit board that replaced the original plastic base. And I can see that I used a cable tie with two extra holes as the strain relief for the cable. And if I recall correctly, these screws uh, support the inner LED circuit board, so the LEDs are up close to the uh, to the front. Right, it is a capacitive dropper. Oh, it's very generously laid out. The screws that actually support the circuit board have good clearance on all area around them for for safety. Um, the capacitor is a three hundred and thirty nano. 630 volts, so it's not actually a suppression capacitor such as just general 630 volt capacitor. I don't see a discharge resistor, which means right now I'm going to uh, I'm going to short those pins out. Ah, there's a wee flash in LEDs. Yeah, that uh, it's an early design. Then oh, when was that? I usually put numbers on the circuit boards. I don't see a date on the circuit board at all. That's odd. So um, it's got the capacitor, it's got a 220 ohm resistor. I'd use higher than that. I'd use 470 ohm these days in that application, just to limit the inrush current. No smoothing. Uh, I see a bridge rectifier there. I initially thought this was a through-hole one, but it looks like an actual surface mount device, or is it? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a surface uh, standard through-hole one that I've just bent the pins. Not sure. Um, then it's got two wires that go up. The LEDs are just in series. Very simple. Um, I would unscrew that circuit board, but it's got uh, lock nuts on it, which is going to make it just a wee bit trickier to unscrew. I also see um, more pads in there that would suggest that, and it's had components in there. Maybe a smoothing capacitor across the output of that? Probably. I'm not really sure why I did that. I would guess, yes, I would guess that would have been a, a electrolytic capacitor just fanned out at the sides. But then I just decided I didn't need it because the flickering was absolutely negligible. There was virtually nothing there. So the only thing I'd really add to this design, well, if there's any point, because after I designed that, these were just all the sort of generics of Asian pound shops in Glasgow had this style of base, and then suddenly they all disappeared. I couldn't get that exact style of base after designing the circuit board, which was kind of annoying, but maybe a, maybe a good thing, because I could have bought loads and loads of these, which is, well, you know, that happens. So, yes, it, it's quite interesting. Um, but after I designed the circuit board, yeah, it kind of disappeared. But if I was designing it again, I would add a discharge resistor across this capacitor, and maybe consider introducing the smoothing. Maybe it was just because I thought electrolytic capacitors. I didn't like the idea that if something went wrong, it could go pop. But, um, yeah, not that that really is an issue.
But uh, yes, that's quite a neat little light. Uh, it certainly looks great. I've got another one that's, I'm sure it's blue and green somewhere. I'll have to have a wee look for that. But yeah, that's quite a nice design. I like that. It's, it's nice just finding old designs and then opening them up and seeing that, you know, yeah, I'd probably have done it the same way. It's quite a neat layout.